main characters in 1801 to 1900s. First, there is William H. James, who designed an underwater breathing apparatus otherwise known as scuba in 1825. The design consists of a helmet and a supply of compressed air and a cast iron belt which was fastened around the waist. It allowed divers underwater for up to an hour. Charles Darwin goes on an expedition on islands in 1931. He studied plants and animals and made discoveries which eventually led to his theory of evolution. Darwin's also had a theory on coral reef atolls in 1842 which stated that reefs formed as islands. Augustus Sieb was a German instrument maker. He improved the previous diving suit designs and introduced the first practical diving suit in 1837. Brutus de Vigeroy, the United States Navy, con contracted him to design a submarine. He then created the first U.S. Navy submarine in 1861. Sir William Thompson was an Irish physicist and engineer, and he invented an operational wireline sounding machine in 1872. These machines make it easier for researchers to survey the ocean depths more accurately. In 1825, a new breathing apparatus, the scuba, was designed by William James. This device allows divers to be underwater for up to an hour. In 1872, William Thompson invented a wireline sounding machine. This machine was faster and more accurate than the traditional methods. It helped researchers survey the ocean much easier than before. In 1837, Augustus Sieb, a German-born inventor, created a watertight rubber suit. It was connected to an air pump on the surface. In 1874, Commander Charles D. Sigsby modified the Thompson sounding machine. The machine uses wire rope to take ocean depth soundings. This improved instrument was termed the Sigsby sounding machine. In 1882, the Carmignol brothers built the first anthropomorphic atmospheric diving suit. To create a close fit, rolling joints were placed in many locations among the suit. In total, this suit had 22 of these joints. Technology used for exploration. This time period included the breakthrough of several technological advancements that allowed for tons of new discoveries in marine science. We first see this in 1861 with the design of a submarine by French emigrant Brutus de Viola. Originally, it was designed to be utilized during the Civil War, but it was never used in battle. Here's a closer look at his design. In 1882, the United States built the first vessel to be used specifically for oceanographic research. They called it the Albatross. The Albatross was a major aid for marine research and was used for nearly 40 years before it was decommissioned in 1921. In 1888, the French Navy created the Gymno, which was the first electrically powered military submarine. It accomplished over 2,000 dives before becoming obsolete as a result of its limited range and exploration. In 1899, Swiss zoologist Alexander Agassiz made several journeys on the Albatross to study different types of coral reefs and fish populations in the Pacific Ocean. Over the next six years, an abundance of marine life was explored in areas that before then were completely unexplored. The voyage of the HMS Beagle sailed off in 1831, boarding passengers like Charles Darwin, a British naturalist. His job was to study plants and animals at each stop of the voyage. In 1860, the first chart of the Gulf Stream was published by the U.S. Coast Survey. The Gulf Stream, a body of water lying in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico and up the eastern coast of North America. On the coast, it brings up a warm climate, which has an impact on ships traveling in the area. 41 years after the HMS Beagle set sail, the HMS, or Her Majesty's Ship Challenger, inspired by the work of Charles Darwin, set sail on a four-year voyage around the world. From Portsmouth, England, the scientists would test salinity, temperature, and density of the seawater. The expedition of the Challenger between 1872 and 1876 would become the forefront of modern oceanography. On the voyage, the discoveries of hundreds of species are consolidated into a report known as the Challenger Report, which forms the basis of modern oceanography. The main marine discoveries made during this period of time. In 1831, Darwin sailed to study the flora and fauna of the Galapagos Islands off the coast of Peru, which include finches, tortoises, and penguins. And all these discoveries led to the development of his theory of evolution. In 49, the continental slope and shelf break were discovered by Coast Survey soundings, and in 53, another Coast Survey sounding discovered life as deep as 6,000 feet below sea level. Four years later, in 57, Captain James Alden discovered a deep 
Gulch on the coast of Monterey Bay, which ended up being the first known deep sea canyon, reaching almost 12,000 feet below sea level and extending almost 100 miles into the Pacific. Within that two-year period of 67 and 68, two naturalists dredged the ocean floor in two different coastal locations and found proof of deep sea life. Louis F. de Portales discovered life below 1,800 feet, and Charles W. Thompson discovered life below 14,000 feet a year later. In 1872, the HMS Challenger began a voyage which yielded the discovery of underwater mountains along with hundreds of marine life species that were previously unknown. Three years later, the HMS Challenger discovered one of the deepest known parts of the ocean, the Mariana Trench, in the Western Pacific, where the seafloor is 26,000 feet, or more than four miles deep. Here you can see the Mariana Trench being compared to the height and altitude of Mount Everest, which is the highest mountain on land. In the same year, the crew of the USS Gettysburg found an undersea mountain 130 miles off the Portugal coast through sounding, which is now named Garinge Ridge. All of these discoveries, namely the works of the HMS Challenger, provide the foundation and the basis for modern oceanographic discoveries. Fun facts. On the HMS Challenger, to measure the depth of the surrounding area, the vessel used an echo sounder and measured a seven-mile depth at one of their stops, the Mariana Trench. Edison electric lamps were used during underwater observation while on the albatross so they can attract fish to the light stations. The Carmignol Brothers diving suit is on display at the National Maritime Museum in Paris. The colleagues' report on the HMS Challenger were very brief in reporting the details of the Mariana Trench, but include long, jarringly racist descriptions of the people they met during their journey, which is a reminder that scientific exploration during this time period hides a history of racial bias.